Uh, oh, yes, please. Yeah, OK, cool. Right. So shall we get started? Yes, please. OK. Um, who are you and what is your connection to Jaywick? I am Danny Sluggett and I moved to Jaywick many years ago when I was 11 years old. I see. Um, what is Jaywick's history over the years? Like, how did it get to where it is today? Well, it was much better off when I first got here than it is today. When I got here in 1986, lots of the relics from the old holiday era were still here. Butlins was just closing. All of the main dance halls, all of the main dance halls in Jaywick were still here. The Londoners, the Morocco Club, the Tivoli, the Sunspot, the Mermaid, the Londoners Club. There were six massive, massive dance halls that could hold thousands of people. They were all still here when I moved here. I thought, I can't wait to get older. I can't wait to be a part of this. And then when I got older, it all closed down. It all fell to the ground. And there's absolutely nothing left apart from the beach. It's a shame, isn't it, what happened? It's soul destroying, Tom. I've seen it all in my lifetime. No one today would remember Jay Week the way I remember it. No, and that's that's very sad, isn't it? But that's unfortunately what happens over time. But with my memories of what I remember Jay Week being like, because I'm still a young man, I'm only 45, and I and I've experienced Jay Week in its prime. I come I come at the last part of Jay Week's prime. When I got here in 1986, there were still things going on. I remember on Wednesday nights in the late 80s, there used to be about 10,000 people go to the Londoners Club because it was acid house, it was rave music. And they used to go there Wednesday nights from 8 p.m. till 5 in the morning on a Wednesday night, every Wednesday, and over 10,000 people would go to that club in Brooklands. How about that? That, that is amazing. Anyway, um, the next question is, is in doing my research, a lot of people have um, mentioned your name and um, they have called you the go to person of Jaywick. Jaywick, why do you think people call you that that name? Because I'm very I've been on all the television programs with Jaywick. So I'm known uh, through my television work. Benefits by the Sea Jaywick. I've done both series and the Christmas special. Plus, whenever the television cameras come to Jaywick, for good or bad reasons, United Nations, they were here like six months ago. So I do talks. I basically, when I was on television last, I, I created a youth club for adults because I got fed up with always helping people but having nothing official to tie it to. So I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create myself a youth club for adults. I'm going to call it a happy club. And because, because it's in Jaywick, I'm going to call it the Jaywick Sands Happy Club. Very simple but effective. I've now yeah. been doing the, the Happy Club for over four years. So because it's a community group and it's an official group and I'm the creator and the leader of it, then I suppose in hindsight, I have made myself a community leader. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, now I can see what you're saying. But I don't um, want to be officially a community leader. I'm doing it um, for, for my lover, Joe Wick. No one's paying me to do it. I'm not doing it for a wage. I'm not doing it for a government or an authority. I'm doing it solely for myself to give the people that are genuine a voice. Some people won't like me. Some people will, will say bad things about me because, A, I don't want to help them with what they're doing, and, B, they want to be me anyway. I, and that is the dark side of all this. But I ignore that, and I carry on, and I don't let it affect my, my plan for Jaywick, which is to give Jaywick a voice, to treat everyone as normal and equal, and to give Jaywick the things that other places have always had. And that is always my dream, and I will never give that up, Tom. OK, yeah. Um, my next question, although you you sort of covered it, um, what is the purpose of the Happy Club? Like, what, what do you aim to do to do with it? Like, what is it for, essentially? It is for to give people that don't have a voice a voice. It's to make people feel like they're part of something. A lot of the people I've had come to the Happy Club are not welcome in any other club. They, they suffer with drug drink problems, some of them. They suffer with bereavement. They suffer with... Alcoholism, whatever they suffer with, I do not judge them. I give them cups of tea, I give them cups of coffee, we play games together, and then we have a proper meeting which I involve them in. And if they're quiet, I specifically go to them and say, Excuse me, what, what do you think needs to be done to make Joe it better? What do you think needs to be done to improve it around here? And so on and so on. 
And I have been doing that now for over four years on a monthly basis. And I write everything in my book. And that is a great read. And also daily, people message me. Can I help them? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I do as much as I, I, do as much as I can, Tom. But you know that our hands are tired and we can only do yeah. so much. But yeah, I, no, I, that is my dream of Jaywick, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what so what are the biggest achievements the Happy Club has done? Have you like brought anything up in the Happy Club that has like made change on like a government or council level? Yeah, many, many things. There's 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 so many I don't know where to start. I mean, we started before the roads had got started and then the roads all got done. So we was kind of edging towards the roads all getting fixed, you know? That is a great achievement. That is something we was involved in. We've been involved in like all of the um, the doing up of Jaywick, the regeneration, like the new houses that have come here and that. We we was working with the council way before that as was announced, and now they're happening. So a lot of the things that are, the regeneration of Jaywick is going on now. Happy Club has worked with them to make it happen because they wanted to know our opinions. They wanted to know what we needed. We said we need social housing. We said that we need CCTV. We said that we need the roads fixed, the pavements fixed. We need CCTV. We need buses. We need this. We need that. We need infrastructure. We need travel. And so much. And all of them things we have achieved with the council, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I don't know um, specifically what, but all of it. We was a yeah, part no. of all of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I can. I understand. I understand. Uh, what would you say is the best parts of Jaywick? What do you love like the most about Jaywick? The best, the things I love most about Jaywick is the beach, the community, and the love. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what could be the future of Jaywick. I mean, mm-hmm. if you ask me a question about what do I want or what do you think the future of Jaywick is, then you you can find all about it. Yeah, I'll get to that in a in a few moments. Okay. Um, what would you like to improve in Jaywick? I mean, Jaywick is a fantastic place, but what yes. would you do to make it an even better place if you could? Right. I, would, I would give Jaywick, first of all, I'd give it a supermarket. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yep, I'd give Jaywick a supermarket, first of all. And then I would improve public transport. So there was buses from five in the morning, not seven. So people could get to the places where there's work. I'd improve public transport. I would improve the infrastructure. I'd, imp- I'd make sure there's a supermarket here and I would build some workshops and all the abandoned land and I'd train people here because people here can't afford to go places to train. So how about bringing people here to train them? Because we've got all the cheap land then that saves them a lot of money from the start. I think we should train people up and turn Jaywick into a training ground. Then the final solution for Jaywick is all the miles of abandoned land behind my house. I think we should build a Disneyland. And bring I, the holiday, I would definitely come. And bring the holiday back to Jaywick. I mean, it was built as a holiday village. I think go back to your roots and build yeah. the Jaywick holiday village. And that, if I had the money, I'd invest it in Jaywick. And that is what I would do. I'd bring the holiday back to Jaywick. And then I always say to Costa del Jaywick, through my plans and my dreams, if I had the money, Tom, they would be reality. Fair enough. Right. I'm um, going back to the point you made about where would you like to see Jaywick in the future? Yes, I would like to see Jaywick in the future on on um on the river on the Riviera. I'd like to see Jaywick the Costa del Jaywick. It's got a beautiful beach, a beautiful harbour. I would like to see them spend the 20 million they're talking about, build a resort a mile out from Jaywick, and it's all flat land a mile out from Jaywick to build all houses up out there. Um, have a road going from Jaywick to it. It's called the Sands Project. Now that is a great vision for Jaywick. And if that comes off, then Danny will be very happy. But I still want all my other dreams to come through for Jaywick. And I will daily, daily, daily help everybody, uh, all people. I won't agree with everybody because everybody, <coughs> there's a lot of people in Jaywick trying to be me. They've seen what I've achieved and a lot of people think they can do it. The trouble is I've got years and years and years of living here. And that is what I have over everybody. A lot of people that get paid to work in Jaywick, they've only been here a couple of years. They don't know Jaywick like I know Jaywick. So I will always have an advantage, if you know what I mean, Tom. Yeah. And my final question <coughs> is um, when you so- you talk to people, you tend to tell them to shine on. Would you be able to tell me uh, kind of what shine on means? Where where does it come from and that? 
With pleasure, Tom. Yes, my mum died when I was 14, but when I was about four or five years old, I used to walk down my stairs and my whole front wall, which was 15 foot long and eight foot high, my whole wall had an album by Pink Floyd on it called Dark Side of the Moon. And that was painted on the wall. And my mum got it drawn on the wall. And it's basically a straight line going into a triangle and then a prison that comes out all colours like the rainbow. So yeah, you're trying to yeah. put a light into a prison... And then the rainbow comes out of it. And that kind of means the dark side of the moon, yeah? Yeah, and no, I understand that. And basically, um, when my mum died, when I was 14, I was I spoke to my dad. I said, Dad, when I was little, I remember a big, big picture on the wall with a rainbow coming out of it. Can you explain what it was? And he said, oh, that was dark side of the moon. Your mum loved that album. So she painted it on the wall. I went, wow, that is love. And then when I got into Pink Floyd to kind of get over my mum, because she obviously wanted me to listen to them. As I got into 16, 17, 18 years old, and I was listening to Pink Floyd, it's not something people my age would, would have been doing, but because I was left that message, I had to do it. And it kind of made me wise from a young man. Already from that album, I learned to say shine on, because I knew that was one of their catchphrases. And I thought, how about rather than say hello or goodbye to someone, how about I say shine on? And then if yeah. people ask me what shine on means... I can then tell them where I got the the phrase from. And that means I'm keeping my mum alive. By saying shine on, in some sort of way, my mum is still alive. Shine on my mum. Do you understand me now? Yeah, I I, I, I do understand, yeah. And I hope everyone else can, because I want to keep my mum alive, and she died way too young. So by saying shine on, in some sort of way, I do believe I'm keeping my mum alive. Yeah, no, and that that's a good thing. Anyway, that's the end of the interview. I'm just going to stop the recording.